Welcome back all you YouTubers and today it's Friday again and part six of the Ultima RS build. My name's Nigel, his name is Rufus and today we're looking at electrics. So here we are again, the Dean Den building the Ultima RS. And as the intro said, we're looking at electrics this week. Now, during my career, I've been fortunate enough to write for many car magazines and give many builders advice on how to build their cars. But there's one topic that keeps coming up again and again and again, and that's electrics. For some reason, builders who are completely comfortable with nuts and bolts often break out into a cold sweat once you start talking about looms. Well, today I'm going to show you and explain how the Ultima RS loom is so straightforward and so easy to install that honestly it is plug and play. Now, having said that, you've probably noticed behind me the RS condition is between a two and a three. Now that's really a bit high, but what I'm doing is I'm setting it there and by the end of the episode, I will turn it down to reflect actually how difficult this was. This box here says it has in it wiring loom, fuses and relays, switch set, headlamp, flash relays, horn, battery cables, battery clamp, and a battery. So let's crack this open. I must get a proper knife. Just using these standing knives. Oh, yep. So, we have a headlamp, a flash relay, battery cables, wow, they're heavy duty, and they're terminated as well. That's brilliant, that's really good. Uh, what have we got? This is, uh, these are the wiring loom clips, P-clips. We'll have a closer look at that in a minute. And then, this switch set okay horn of course we need a horn battery clamp wow it's quite a lot in this box this is the Raptor GP and its clamp that I believe controls the switch gear on the steering wheel God, it's battery in there, I think. Loom. Wow, look at that. Okay, there's the loom. And... Here it is, the Ultima RS wiring loom. And I can feel some of you already getting into a cold sweat and panicking if you had to install this. But interestingly, installing a wiring loom such as this onto a component car is one of the simplest tasks of the build. It's clean. You can take your time. There is no glue setting, so you don't have to rush. And it's all very, very logical. And what I'll do is as I'm installing this, I'll explain why it's so, so logical. So, the wiring loom here, let's have a closer look at it. So we have the main trunk, as I will call it, which has obviously, I don't know, 30, 40 wires in it. And what this trunk does is this splays out into multiple spurs, as you can see here. Now, if we take one of these spurs, for example here, spur number 39, it's labeled, it says headlight switch, and it has the correct terminations to go on the headlight switch, supplied by Ultima with their instrumentation. It's just plug and play. That's seriously, that's all it is. If we look at this, what's this? 41 window wiper. Well, I assume that's the um, windscreen wiper. 42 brake fluid warning light. 40 fog light switch. And it goes on and on and on. 
And if you see every one of these spurs is terminated, so there's no soldering for you to do, there is no heat shrink work for you to do, it is all done. So it is very, very logical. Now, apart from the wires, we have here three fuse boxes and Ultima provide a diagram which shows what each of those fuses are for. The five amp, those are for low um, current circuits, that would be lighting, etc. And the larger amperages would be for items that take more beef. So, for example, we're looking at windscreen wiper motors, etc. Also, we have the relay block. Now, a lot of people get a little bit confused about what relays are for. And to be honest, the way to think about a relay, it's a way of a very small switch with very small contacts switching a larger current. So for example, if I had a windscreen wiper motor and I wanted to activate it with a small switch, you know, that look quite dainty on the dashboard, you can imagine the connectors will be really small. And when they close, supplying the current needed to a windscreen wiper motor would be, well, you would get sparks. So what these relays do is that small switch just triggers a magnetic circuit in here which closes larger contacts and those larger contacts power the windscreen wiper motor. It's as simple as that. It's no more complex. So the first job I'm going to do now is lay this loom out over the chassis to get an idea of where it sits. Here we go, ready to go again. Now, I'm gonna focus on the loom in the video today, as I previously said. However, the first stage of actually doing that process is drilling holes in the chassis members following the PDFs that Ultima provide to ensure the loom and all the hoses are correctly secured. Now, just to give you an idea of how fastidious Ultima are, look at this slot. To get the idea, and every one of those goes on a specific place on a loom or a hose and is pop riveted into the chassis in a specific location. So I'm going to follow the PDFs and drill the holes for all those P clips, and then what we're going to do is put the loom on. So I'm going to speed this up because it's a lot of holes and see you in a minute. Okay, now I must say, I'm finding this a little bit more challenging than I should. Now, the reason I'm saying this is I've, I've got a system now, because I've made one mistake and I know why I've made the mistake. So the process is, get the PDF, understand the PDF and all the lines. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the clutch line. Now, okay, I know I'm doing the loom today, but I'm trying to get all the fixings put in place. So you can see it comes down this diagonal and then it goes along the chassis rail and at the back here, even though it's a bit tricky to see, you can't really see it, from, it actually goes behind the rail. Now, so this isn't too bad, this one. I can sort of visualize this. So we have one, two, three, four, five clips.
Now this eyelet here, this is one of the many earth points on the chassis. Now, one of the key things, especially with a component car with a composite body shell, uh, earths are so, so important. How many times have you been following a car and the indicators and brake lights are flashing together? That's caused through bad earth. Now, clearly here, we have lots of powder coating and what bolts on here is a loom earth, like so, and also this battery earth. So this is critical that powder coating is removed to provide an electrical connection. So, well, first of all, remove the powder coating from the inside of the hole, then using, hole, sorry, and then using my lovely Dremel, Underneath as well. Now don't worry about it being bare steel. That's the whole point. Because once the connections are made, we can paint over the top to ensure that there's no corrosion moving forwards. Hello. <gasps> ah, sparks! Yeah, I'm mad. I know I'm mad. I know. Anyway, another episode draws to a close, and now the loom is fully installed. And if you look behind me, even though I made a couple of mistakes this week, I've set the RS Con to a two. So, what's next week? What's in store? Well, we're going to move on to handbrake cables and also gear shift cables and all the brake and clutch lines. So until then, as I always tend to finish th these episodes, creativity is intelligence having fun. Happy spannering. <laughs>